Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 350 at scavengerlife.com. Okay. okay. Let's get into it. Spring seller update. So this week, the big news is the spring seller update. Right. Uh, for anyone new to eBay, this happens basically twice a year in the spring and the fall, where eBay tweaks the policies or introduces a new program to often push a seller to change their behavior. Mm -hmm. And the idea is then to make everyone more competitive and to sell more. Kind of like the government does with our regulations. Um, <laughs> for the most part, it, you do not have to actually do anything. So if you're someone that sells on eBay and doesn't want to change, eBay isn't making it you actually change. And you can still accept no returns, not have a source subscription, just keep doing what it's doing. But this is what eBay wants everyone to do. And I guess the assumption is, is that in their search algorithm, they'll push people down that don't accept the changes right. that so they're doing. They're, they're suggested changes right. so that you're, in quotes, a better seller. Right. So like you said, you don't have to do any of these right. if you don't want. Right. So, you know, it's a... It's kind of, a, I guess, a double-edged sword, you know. You don't have to do anything, but if you don't need to do anything, I assume eBay's, you know, algorithm isn't going to like it, it's your stuff, so might not put it a higher in search. Right, I don't know sure. that for a fact. That's just my assumption. But then, you know, the idea is, is I guess they've crunched the numbers and think if you do these things that they say, you're going to supposedly sell more. I don't know. So let's get into it. Number one is there are a different store subscriptions. Right, they added two new. So there had been basic, premium, and, and anchor. anchor. Now they've added one at the beginning, the starter, right. which is 100 items. Right. And they did one at the far end, Enterprise, with 100,000 items. For $3,000 a month. I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> who has 100,000 items? That's crazy. And so everyone was complaining. They need to put like a subscription in between the uh, it's premium and anchor. Because right. because right now it goes from 1,000 items to 10,000 items. And it goes from, what is the price? It's like $50 a month to, to $300. To $300, yeah. So dollars, yeah. why not put one at 150 Yeah. It's, it's that strange. makes yeah, so like, much more like, sense than like a put starter one that's pack. That's like a 5,000 items or something. You right. Know, like, so, it, so it, I think everybody was sort of like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't weird. know. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, who knows, but that's just the way it is. Okay. The next thing is, and the one that was probably the most, um, you know, talked about was they are no longer going to allow people to put a, a restocking fee on items. On on returns. Right, on, on a returns, which sucks. I mean, I'm like, yep. why not just keep it as an option? But they're just fully taking it away. Yep. It was great for us because, you know, it felt like it gave us power to put a, a crimp on any buyer who wanted just to... Right. A uh, renter items. So someone that wants to buy a piece of clothing. Wear it to a wear party. Wear it for 30 days and then a return it. They now at least have to pay a, a restocking fee. So anyway, right. that's gone. eBay's now really pushing if you want to remain a top rated seller plus to get that 10% off your final value fees. Yeah. They're now requiring us all to add free 30 day returns which they say is the retail standard. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so basically it's like this. They want you to say to a buyer, if you buy this and if you keep it for 30 days, up to 30 days, right. if you want to return it just because if you just don't enjoy it, and you can return it for free. So they have to pay to have it shipped to them, but they don't have to pay to ship it back. And they don't have to give any a reason at all. They just say, I don't enjoy this item yeah. for 30 days. Yep. And then you as a, a seller have to eat that cost. Yep. So like if someone bought a pair of shoes, like we're on the East Coast. If right. someone bought a pair of shoes from us in California, how much do you think it would cost to ship it back? You know what I'm going to say? It depends on the weight. A pair of Keds. A pair of Keds. Okay, so that's first class, so it's going to be under $5. How about a pair of boots? A pair of boots, like heavy boots, 
Jeez, it could be fifteen dollars. Wow. Although I will say the return, because USPS has like return labels, it's discounted. Right. But I don't know the price because it doesn't like tell you right. unless you look on your invoices. So you know, it's kind of interesting. They, you know, let's talk about a couple of things. Number one is eBay saying it's the uh, retail standard, so we're just doing what is normal. I mean, I argue it's not a normal thing. Like on Amazon, you yeah. cannot return an item just because you don't enjoy the item. For free. For, for, for free. Like I have to say there's something wrong You have to say it's defective this. for it so, to be free. Right. I mean, I guess there are some companies like Zappos is a shoe company, and they do that where if you can buy shoes, and if you don't like the shoes, right. send them back free. But that's a pretty edge case well, and also me. the the comparison between Zappos and very very small sellers like us right. is like apples and oranges. Right. So we, I think eBay should be honest and say it's not a retail standard. They're trying to create something new to stand out. Fair right. enough. You know, MBAs behind a desk somewhere. They've you decided it, it's true. Like every yeah. seller update, yeah, you can tell. These MBAs are like coming up with like what's the one thing we can tweak to like percentage strategies. Right. Exactly. So, fair enough. So look, we talked about it on the a forum, I think in a really good way. Like yeah. everyone was, you know, yes, no, but people were putting in facts and uh, figures. It was a very healthy conversation and I agree. If we look at our uh its return rate, ours is like three point five its percent or right. something. Like that. So if that stays the same, and we have to eat those, it returns back. If we if we stay a top rated uh, uh, at seller and get the ten percent off of our final value fees, it basically evens out. Like we'll right, the ten percent helps pay for it. So I I I personally think we should try it. You know, and yeah. I think you have to put this on by May. I think is when it, you mm. actually have to turn it all, all on. I mean, so that's assuming that it returns don't go up because, you know, right. my thing is if people know they can return things for free, our returns going to go up just because there's no barrier. Um, right. You know, we'll see. You know, you can also put it on items one by one. So it doesn't have to be a blanket. All my mm -hmm. items can be returned for free so we can leave out large items, you know, like right. a big piece of artwork. Right. Like. I'm not going to say people can return a big piece of our work. It's within 30 days. I mean, it might cost $50 to right. ship back, you know? So the, the thinking on eBay is this. The MBAs behind the desk is if you say free returns, then sales will go up. Right. That is the theory. Like, it, it, it lowers. So if someone's like, should I buy this or not? And then if it says, oh, I can return it free even if I just change it's my mind, I'll buy it. Right. In, in one sense... It kind of makes sense. It's kind of like when PayPal announced that thing, I don't know, a year or two ago, where yeah. they were like, on PayPal, you can return something like with six months and get your Right, right. It was 180 days. And people were freaking <laughs> out. We were like, what? And honestly, I don't think we've ever had one person try to return a something through PayPal in that way. Right. And the, the thinking behind that is, is that when people buy an item, they want to keep the item. Right. So... You're almost like giving people something that they're never going to take advantage of. But it's that mm. one a little mental thing to make sure they buy the item just because they want to Right, it's, it's removing that barrier. Company. And what you're hoping is that they don't return it. Yeah. And that they want to keep it, like you said. And the other good thing that uh, is you can put it free, uh, it returns only on items within America. So, so it's domestic right. only. It's not like, so you know, people overseas are like, oh, I can return this for free. It's right. like, oh my God, please, no. Which is good. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think the thing to me is this. Uh, there's a guy in the forum... To Mugden. To Mugden. Yeah, I love people have these names. I know. I'm like, I'm like, he's he's a friend of mine, but I don't know how to say his name, and it's right. a funny name. But uh, he says this: eBay annoys me by saying it's a retail standard because it's not. Uh, years ago, everyone jumped on the free uh, shipping and free uh, it return ban uh, a wagon, but they backed away on that. And I think that's true, even on mm -hmm. Amazon. Mm -hmm. You only get items shipped for free on Amazon if you, number one, pay a subscription for right. Amazon Prime right. or so if you, you buy at least $35. Yeah. And 
it's not free to ship back if you just say, I don't, I don't enjoy like this it, item. Yeah. So I really feel like the free uh, shipping thing is more of a perception than a, a reality. It's psychological. It, yeah. Well, like we were saying, it shouldn't be called free shipping. It could. It should be called shipping included. Right, because free shipping is a lie. There I is mean, no free shipping. Look, look, I just be clear. Yeah. Free shipping, quote unquote, is a lie. Right. That's going to be the title of this. Uh, Free shipping is a lie. Because people, uh, because a seller will adjust their price to put the cost to uh, ship it to us inside the price of the right. item. So it's not free. It's uh, shipping included. Right. So it's just for those people who like, I just want to know the set the, the, price. The, the, the final right. price. I know it's not free. I just want to know the final price instead yeah. of the price. And that's it's psychological. It's a psychological. Yeah, it absolutely so is. even now, people on the a forum say they're just going to add a dollar handling fee to all their items. Yeah. So they have extra cash to pay for the, you know, two to four percent of people who will actually right. return the item. So uh, really, it's like a... It's a socialism, people. This is socialism. That people are every so other people are going to pay for the people who right. send stuff back. Right. And so <laughs> essentially. Like you're blanketing your store with higher prices. So I mean that's that's it's my thing. We're gonna do it. I don't think it's a we'll big just deal. See. Whatever. Like I'm not but at the end of the day, I feel like it's a kind of a bait and switch thing. It's just like uh, you know, it's like when you walk in a mall and people have big signs that say everything is fifty percent off. All they've done is they've jacked up the price by it's fifty it's percent off, and then, and then they, they say, cut the price. Yeah, so it's just a foolish thing. Right, right. I wish I I feel like there are better things eBay could do to improve their service than these kind of foolish. Like things. what, Jay? Just curious. <laughs> no, they're pl actually we we have a. Uh, a whole thread on the forum about what sellers, small sellers, uh, believe could be improvements. Yep. Um, and it's actually a very interesting uh, forum yeah. topic. I guess, granted, it's it's none of the things that uh, we've said are as flashy and are like, you know, something they could put in an advertisement like, hey, look at this thing. It's well, more like, yeah. What's so interesting to me is that a lot of these policies that they implement are skewed towards larger commodity sellers. Very true. But the way eBay advertises itself as like shop for you because you're unique and you're like, they're selling what we do, not the iPhone cases from China. Right. I, you know I think what you I mean? bring up a very good point and people have talked about this. I mean, eBay is not us. You know, eBay is right. not us who are selling old shoes and little bits the and bobs. The majority is and, not us. You know, old weird stuff. eBay is mainly like Amazon. Just, you know. Yeah, come on. These eBay. huge people that come on and they're uh, selling brand new stuff from China. And when you get it, it's shipped from an Amazon warehouse. <laughs> so you're like, I'm basically shopping on Amazon. Right. So, you know, our <laughs> market, probably and most people that hear our podcast here are more of like, we're like a little tiny part of eBay. Yeah. And a lot of these things are, aren't aimed at us, but we get, you know, sucked in. Yeah. But fair enough. I mean, whatever. Yeah. It's just, that's just how it is, you know. Um, so that's just why, you know, people that have a store with a thousand items. I mean, even our store of 6,000 items isn't that big compared right. to a lot of the people that sell on eBay or these companies that have, you know, yeah, whoever taking advantage of the 100,000 item subscription. Right, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, yeah, it's amazing that they added a 100,000 store level for $3,000, yeah. but they didn't put one in between us and the people, you know, one step below us. Right. You're like, okay, I see who you're aiming for yeah. now. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, and you know, and I feel like this happens every update that they do. You know, even us. You know, you kind of like uh, you kind of grit your yeah, teeth. Yeah, you're like, like what's it gonna be? This you know, it's like, it's like someone had an idea way up top, yeah. and then we're the plebes down, and you're then we have to actually try and implement it, and then we'll see if it works. We're the and, plebes, uh, and you know, and uh, someone on the it's forum TSAT was made a very good point. You know, mm -hmm. if eBay added an extra bonus, like you'll get an extra 
right. on your final value fees if you implement this. Then it would feel like eBay's It'd be kind like, of, okay. They're, they've yeah. kind of given you a carrot. Like they're, yeah. they're going to kind of absorb some of the pain. But at this point, they're like, we're going from 20% to 10%. They did that a year ago. Yeah. And now, not only do we give you a smaller amount back, you now have to take on this extra cost. Right. So really that 10% had been nice because it was just like, it was like free cash. It helped with your fees. You now know? that 10% is like, oh, that's just going to take... The, it's going to absorb all the... I mean, to eat all this. So basically I'm getting even a less. Basically so. they... they in, in theory, they sort of took away that discount. Right. They're like, this discount basically is gone. And honestly, because we are like a weird, a vintage kind of store, with we have like bigger items. And if so, if yeah. we're not putting on the free, uh, it's return on those heavier items. We don't get a discount on those. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. might, yeah, so we may. It's really strange, know. yeah. It, it's, it's a little bit crazy. Yeah. Uh, the one thing is, eBay says, we understand that this could be an abuse policy where yeah. people could just get items and just mail stuff back. Yeah. So eBay says that they will protect us from abuse and from a, a negative feedback. Hmm. And what does this mean? Okay, it says, if a buyer asks for a something, it's different or extra, or if we identify a buyer who frequently returns items, we will step in and protect you. For example, if a buyer damages an item and, or, and uh, returns it, you can decide to issue a partial a refund and we'll take it from there. If a, if a buyer escalates a case, we'll take care of it for you so uh, you can focus on your business. Plus, we will pr protect your uh, reputation from any uh, negative feedback. So that sounds good. Interesting, right? But there's a big hazy area there. Wh who decides if this person is abusive, you know? Right. Do we get data? I mean, of course not. I know no. the answer. But yeah. like... Who gets to see the data of if this person s sends things back all the time, you know? Like, what's to stop someone from, like, buying five pairs of shoes? Yeah. And they just test them out, and then they... They're like, I like this one four pair. four of them back. Yeah, to, and I'll send the rest back. Cause like, we, that's, yeah. that's allowed, with right? No, with yeah. no reason. Oh, I just didn't like it, and it's free. But I guess in that sense, then they would have to be eating the cost to have it shipped to them. Right, so they're only getting right. the price of the shoes but, back. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, e eBay says they'll protect you. It's just, you know, we all know it's what that's like, though. It's kind of hazy. Like, when do they yeah. actually protect us, you know? Right. Okay, and then another thing in the update was payment inter a mediation. Hmm. They they uh, they I uh, use a really weird word. Yeah. So right. Basically, eBay is going to start to uh, use, I guess, this new PayPal competitor. What's this, it called? Adyen. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's it's a Dutch company. Kind of a horrible name. Now yeah. we we did talk about this when the email right. first came out. So eBay, like they says that they're going to start to introduce it, and it will eventually fully be implemented in the. A summer of 2021, so we still have three okay. uh, years, but they're going to start now introducing it. Okay. It's very unclear how this is going to all... We're just work. along for the ride, people. Yeah. <laughs> so it says to enable intermediated payments for their eBay accounts, a seller should expect to provide eBay with some additional payment data to... Transition to a new uh, relationship with eBay that includes integrated payment capabilities. What does that mean? I don't know. But, you know, all of us hope that the mm -hmm. buyer doesn't have to be, like, applying to new accounts yeah. and stuff. Like, yeah. Hopefully the buyer can just keep buying on eBay. They'll just uh, see something uh, new that says, like, pay by credit card or something. Right. Instead of having to pay through eBay. I mean, something through PayPal. Like that. We'll see. Uh, inventory optimization and growth tools. eBay's talked about this stuff. That sounds to me more like Amazon-like stuff, like ways to sell brand new items where they'll tell you, like, if you sell, you know, brand new, it's Nintendo. Yeah. Everyone is selling it at, you know, $102, so a lower your price. I don't yeah, know. and for us, that's, yeah. you know, I've never used those tools, really. Yeah. But. Like I said, at the end of the day, it's really not worth a lot of time fighting this because this is happening, people. You know, yeah, well, there's we're, nothing. We're on the ground. It's planting time. 
and his plebes were like He's out in the fields. Time. The <laughs> people in the oh, high yeah. buildings have told us what to do. They've given us our seeds, and now we just got to plant these seeds and see what happens, you know. And yeah, and, that's all you can do. You know, hope you hope that you stored a, you know a bag of potatoes in your cupboard or just to quit get it you all and just go to the flea market. Yeah. You know. I'm not saying I want to do that. I'm just saying right. that is a choice. That's always a choice. Yep. Just sell stuff in your front yard. Right. And if you are worried about this and you're new to eBay, you know, we've been through a many cycles of this. Yes. We've uh, survived. Ten years worth, Jay. It's all been fine. Right. Yeah. It's all been fine. And, you know, and to be fair, I would say, I don't know if it's been better, but it's been consistent for us, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. People keep buying. Yeah. Yep. That's what keeps us going. That's right. All right, so let's talk about uh, our week. One thing people have been asking or talking about is a FedEx smart post that is no good. Right. That the. But uh, you say it's fine for you. I don't know. I don't know if it's. I don't know what's up with this. I don't know if it's store by store. It's having a bug. So in our store, people are yeah. still doing smart posts. Right, and maybe maybe because I haven't sold anything oversized. I mean, mm -hmm. that that's what's weird to me. But also, actually... Okay. So I'm unclear, and right. you need to clarify something okay. for me. Right. So people are choosing Smart Post, yes. and they're paying $5, and we pay $5, right. and it's everything's fine. It's never $5, fine. but yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yes. Okay. Um, because, you, you know. because the problem is people are saying the, right. the, the a buyer is charged $5, and they end up Paying $10. $35 right. or something. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen that discrepancy. And actually, as I was saying, oh, I, have, I haven't I have had any oversized. I did have an oversized package that was 20 inches long. It was like this pot rack thingy. And the, the prices matched. I mean, I get a discount through eBay, so my price is a little bit. But it worked out, and I'm like, Hmm. A shrug. I'm just shrugging. I'm like, yeah. I don't know if it's like certain parts of the country are being weird. Right. And so what people have said on the forum is they've said, I have a ticket open with eBay. I have a reference number. I've asked them and they just don't know what it is. Right. So yeah. the alternative is to turn, if it's not working for you, turn off smart post and put on parcel select or whatever right. the cheapest uh, ground is for USPS, which is parcel select. Right. I don't know the answer. Okay. I wish I did. And yeah. I wish that I was see I, I don't wish that I was seeing it, but I haven't seen it. Right. And I don't know if it's store by store, region by region. Don't know. So if you had so why don't we say it was a problem and we have six thousand items, is it something where you can just go and bulk change and take it off of everything or how you do people can, do that? You can and it sucks if you don't have business policies. Wow. With business policies you're just like Okay, everything that had smart posts, right. now change that to parcel select. Save, done, what, took one second. So speaking of, and this is something that I don't I know about, so this is brand new information for all of us. So we were gonna try business policies on our smaller store. Yes, we did. How It was great. How has it been going? It's good. It's good. Yeah, So it's totally you, So you were able to go and clean it all up yep. and combine policies? I have like policies. four policies. Okay. Well, one, yeah, I have a couple specialty ones for like nail polish. That's and, its own policy. And it doesn't make it easier to figure out or deal with or... Yeah, it's super okay. easy. Cool. I just, I, I'm nervous to turn it on our big store because what happens is when you turn it on and if there's little tiny changes right. per, it's going to make like 150 policies and right. I have to go in and like, it's, you know what? I should just do it. Yep. And. Especially now that things are slow. <laughs> you well, do the, it now. The, the issue is, is cleaning it up before. Um, our helpers come. It just—it's yeah. hard when you have employees and you're like, yeah, it's totally messed up. Uh, right. Don't but, even look at that. <laughs> right. Like, but I mean, it's not do? that big of a deal. I mean, especially since it's one of our helpers is only taking pictures, so it doesn't even. Um, That's um, true. For her. I don't know the right I guess I, I should change it. Guess my question is: so, uh, what do we gain by doing that? Just the ability to turn things on and off quickly. Yeah, to turn things on and off quickly, to turn to switch your handling time in like five minutes. Mm -hmm. It takes almost no time. Um, to do a change like this where you're like, oh, FedEx smart post is being weird. Turn okay. it off. Like any policy that had smart post, just switch it to parcel and you're like golden. I say so, we I say we pull the trigger on it. 
We're in a time of big change. People, people on the pod listening to this podcast are going to be like, "Okay, Jay. So when <laughs> I turn it on, I'll let you clean up the if you thousand want, policies that it turns on." If you want me to do it, you're in big trouble. Okay, so this week was I, I'm not going to use the word slow. Don't say slow. <laughs> I, I refuse <laughs> to use the word. You're slow. You're the one that was like, "What? What does slow mean, guys?" I oh, feel like slow. I feel like we need to come up with some different uh, language. So, so, let, so let's think of it. So it's not slow. It's just it's not fast. <laughs> it's not hot. <laughs> okay, so we have said our goal every week is to sell one thousand dollars a worth of items. This week we sold twelve hundred dollars uh, worth of items. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so you know we met our goal. Yeah, but that's very different from the Christmas very time cool. when yeah. we would be selling twenty five hundred dollars worth yeah. of stuff. So yeah, um, you know we've definitely yeah. come off that high. Um, Absolutely, we've we had days. It's this week where we might have sold one thing. For eleven dollars, I feel like a lot of our sales are really the low price sales. I mean, it yeah. just it just it reminds me as as much as I rage against having a store where if you're just putting in like ten and fifteen dollar items, I'm like, why are we only selling ten and fifteen dollar items? Like, right, where, we have a lot of other. Where are these coming from? Like, right. I don't remember a listing item so cheap. <laughs> exactly. You know? Well, yeah. Like we don't. You're like, wow, well, why do I have eleven dollar items in my store? Pick up items like <laughs> we do not scavenge to find ten or fifteen dollar items. I, I don't know, but yeah. I feel like that's the time period we're in. Like the kind of buyers we're having right now, or yeah. the people at the yeah. low end, we're getting the people who like. They they buy and then they they will a message us and say oh I didn't mean to buy that cancel that right away I think that happened three times this week I swear to God you're like one person said oh I bought that by accident I I'm not sure how that happened I'm like okay well I already shipped it so we're getting the buyers who like ask a million questions and we're like actually entertaining them because we're like I want this sale you know well and and we're the hungry ones you're like yeah they're asking a million questions like. Can you measure the square of this pattern? So I know the exact, yeah. I'm like, oh, So what's the square me? root of the waist in comparison to one lady, one the lady, distance to the sun? Look, I have a listing for a suit jacket. And she's like, what's the measurement of the pants on these? I'm like, there are no pants. <laughs> yeah. It's just a jacket. I mean, now, I mean, we're in the period when, like, when we hear the eBay noise that there's well, <laughs> a message. Oh I'm like, God. oh, let it be an offer and not... A message of course message. it's a message i'm like oh i don't want to read this i mean we had a guy last night probably a drunk guy he was he like he was drunk you're charging 35 dollars for this shirt it looks like it's probably worth five dollars it looks like expletive <laughs> he's yeah. like swearing in his message you're like god so i was right i don't know like if you saw that i was kind of egging him on i was writing him back i was like oh you wrote to it yeah i know well i blocked him first of all what did you say i was like <laughs> i'm really glad that you like this shirt you know <laughs> if you buy it we can ship in the uh, morning and then he wrote back like, he's like are you kidding me? i wouldn't buy that piece of blue and i was like <laughs> Should I raise the price? Is it that good? That is so funny that you wrote him back because I was going to write him back and just say something like, awesome, like nothing nonsensical. Yeah. But I, but your voice in my head was, don't even. Yeah. And you wrote him I twice. Oh, I know. It's that. But, I, it, but it's so hilarious when someone's so outraged yeah. about his shirt. I don't <laughs> encourage that. It's just, it's, it, it's been, funny. it's been that week. It's just been frustrating. But at the end of the day. Yeah. We made twelve hundred dollars. We made we made the money we needed to make. Okay. It, it just felt like a you know it just feels like a slow. Oh, it's a sl- It feels like a grind. Right. That's what it feels like. There there are weeks that just feel like a grind. Just for point of fact, yes. In our second store, our autopilot store, we made eighty dollars. <laughs> we sold four items. So yeah. I feel like our autopilot store is like the canary in the coal mine. You know. That's very interesting. It's like it's yeah. It's like this autopilot store, and like if it's doing really bad, I feel like that's a good. Everything's doing. Bad. I feel like that's a good symbol for how eBay's Universal. doing. Universal. I'm not saying it's well, true. Well, when it's really good, it, it feels right. like it's a good week. Right, where you're like, I, we aren't doing anything, and we're making five hundred right. bucks. It's very interesting. Okay, oh, Ryan's excited. About okay, this. so this sale, yeah. I had a pair of vintage Nikes, probably from the early '80s, women's. And these shoes, okay, I'll tell you how much they sold for. $169. Yeah. 
These shoes, I very specifically said, these are not to wear. The inside is crumbling and the bottoms are stiff. Right. These are for display only right. because there are collectors who do collect them. And a designer at Nike headquarters in Oregon bought them. Right. Paid priority, shipped them priority. Yep. They got there in two days. That's also our highest sale of the week. $170. Yep. I was and super glad to sell those yeah. to the exact person yep. that needed to find them. That's like the quintessential stuff that we love to buy and sell. The stuff that we found in a junkie thrift store where right. we got it for probably not even a dollar. No one else would know what to do with Yeah, they're like, yeah, things. I can't even wear it. It's these. kind of amazing they were even on the shelf because like, it's when you pick them up. They're and like we, crusty. It, you could just feel they're going to fall apart. But... They may be used to create a new line yeah. of product. Or part of, I don't know if <laughs> Nike has like a little museum or right. something. Who knows? It's so cool though. So another set of things that we sold this week, I think we sold like three ashtrays. Yep. So random. Yeah, we used to buy ashtrays just because, you know. Like mid-century modern. They're pretty common to find and they're really cheap because who smokes anymore? And, you know, they, they often look cool or they're cool glass. Design, yeah. But really, we find that they're hard to they're sell. They're so hard to sell. Because who wants to buy an ashtray these days? It's just, you know? Unless you're smoking pot, I mean, and you Whoa. want a very stylish. Yep. Look, pot is legal in several states pot. now. Weed. Weed. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Yeah, so... The ganja. And, yeah. The chronic. Okay. <laughs> Wacky tobacco. That's right. Okay. Um, we sold a bunch of hats. Yep. It's like... It's like... Ugh. Just like it's t-shirts. It's like bread and butter. But you know what's cool? Books. You know, okay, it's I, all good. I'm going to tell you. I, ha I found this little um, picture frame. Tiny little picture frame. And it was this enamel, like totally 1980s. It has two cats on it and a heart. And I found it just at a junkie thrift store. And I was like, this is so, it totally reminds me of like my childhood being five years old in 1985, you know? And uh, it's like you have like a picture of like a grandkid in there. Yeah, something. like it, and it sold for $22. Yeah. So, you know, I love finding stuff like that where you're like, oh, someone's going to see this and be like, this is so my childhood and yeah. buy it. And somebody did. So really, not in much else to talk about. Yeah, things we just sold like, just bread and butter, baby. Yeah, and 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 like my real quick, it's my dream of selling things for three hundred dollars. Is is <laughs> over. that dream has been look demolished? That stuff will come back. I don't know, but uh, but honestly, that dream I keep having, I don't follow up uh, with it because I even said we need to have at least five hundred items in our store that is priced over three hundred dollars. We have not we been doing that work to get that kind of inventory. We've so, been a little busy, but yeah. yeah, okay. Just just to be. I do want to mention one other sale. So over Christmas time, we were in New York, and we went to West Elm, mm -hmm. and we bought stuff on sale. Like, they had, like, this clearance section after Christmas, and I got this little, like, it's like a word object, little decor sign, and they were $4, and I bought five of them, yep. and I sold one back to someone in New York for $34. Yep. We always go by those kind of stores and they always have like a section of like open box stuff. Open box or like it's got a little scratch on it or there, something. There's often like sheets and comforters and I mean decor. We, we definitely yeah. like look at every single item. We're right. like what, can we use this or can we sell it? Uh, customer issues. We, we've kind of talked about our customer issues. It's fine. It's just, just, uh, it's just like when I feel like it comes in waves. When it just seems like every a message is someone with a problem, and the problem is just their own perception, right. and it's fine, and you just have to deal with it. Like one guy bought a book, and then he wrote and said, "Oh, I butt dialed that. I didn't mean to buy that." Which and it's is like that's I'm impossible. Like, who, you, anybody listening to this, have you ever accidentally bought something on eBay? It's yeah. like you have to click through three or four times. Yeah. I'm like, so whatever. It's well, just... the, and and that was the one where I was like, I had just shipped it, and my postal carrier had just come and picked it up, and it's gone, and it's got scan tracking, and I'm like, well, just ship it back. So things we learned in the uh, forum. If you're interested in learning more and just hearing people talk about how they're going to deal uh, with all these, yeah, you the know, changes, changes updates. coming up. There's a great. A thread on our yeah. a forum. It's very a level-headed. Yep. People have different opinions, but yep. everyone's talking about it in a way that's 
you know, constructive. Yeah. Constructive. People, some, some, some people say, I'm just not going to participate, right. which is totally fine. They just won't be it's a top rated seller. It's like, right. just, that's fine. They're not saying eBay is trying to kill them. They're right. just like, I'm not participating. And then there's some people saying like, I did the uh, numbers. Some people even post like the data and yeah, the calculations really it, yeah. and it's like, it's going to work. And so we're fine. One person did a, a YouTube commenter. Yeah. We had a caller that said they were trying to sell a uh, multiple items, but eBay wouldn't allow the buyer to do that. Right. And so he or she said that there is a setting in buyer, uh, it's requirements to uh, limit how many items the same buyer can buy or bid on it's within a certain time frame. So, that, so there is a setting. So, so I don't know why that would be like, why, why would you stop a buyer from buying all your inventory? You know? <laughs> You're like, buy everything. Know. Yes. Yeah. I have no idea why that exists, but it does. So if you're having a problem with that, you need to go find that setting. And, and someone else said, it. if it's a Mary Kay products, like, I don't know, did, did that person say it was a Mary someone Kay? Someone mentioned Mary Kay. I don't know if it was on the forum. They were just saying, and I didn't know this, like a Mary Kay is one of those, uh, 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 retailers or, or whatever companies that come after hard at people trying to sell their products online. On eBay, yeah. yeah. I mean, it doesn't sure. sound like that has anything to do it's with this, but I found that interesting. Like, why a Mary Kay would care if you sold online or because door to they, door? Because they believe it it degrades their brand. Oh. That's the that's the theory for all people saying. You can't sell this on because you can only authorized. only buy it from authorized, authorized dealers. Yeah. Hmm. So that's their thing. I'm sure people get around it all the time. Yeah. But like we always say, eBay always says it's like a speeding ticket. Some people get through and right. some people don't. Yeah. I'm sure you can buy a ton of Mary Kay stuff right now on yep. eBay. I think I will. <laughs> I, th I will now. Okay. What our coming week will be like yes uh, we've still been doing odds and ends at our, our rentals i know this is yeah. as a, it's nothing to do with ebay but this is the a reality of our life so we actually didn't do a whole lot on ebay yeah th this past week we did know? a bunch at our rentals because it's you know spring is right around the corner and our rentals are getting really busy like in yeah. march our newest a uh, rental is booked 27 of 31 nights i think it's yeah no it's that's correct like I don't even know what to say. I'm like, what? Yeah. So if we're going to be doing anything, we're doing it now. So we're like yeah. doing little updates and like, you know, that thing needs repainting and this and that. Just right. get it right. And so that way we're just like going. Right. You um, have to do that stuff when there's time right. to do it. And, and, I, and I only bring that up too because, I mean, it's been a long slog. Anyone that's been hearing us for a while now, I mean, we started on eBay in 2008 and we've been taking our profits and putting them into these vacation uh, rentals as a second kind of income stream. Right. I mean, we're now far down the road with two of these things. And these are the things that make me not stay. You know, when eBay is God, not slow, when eBay isn't making us as much money as I <laughs> want it to, I used to stay up at night because yeah. it was like our eBay sales was the only thing between us and like, not you know, paying the mortgage. And yeah. not paying our a mortgage yeah. or having to get a job. Now, we have a second income stream. And when eBay isn't making as much as I like, I'm like, oh, it's no big deal. We, we have this other income stream. Right. I you mean, know? you still worry about it because you want that income. But, but I'm sleeping like a baby, baby. Baby. <laughs> okay. Well, just, just on that note, if people do want to come visit, there is there is time in March at the farmhouse. Yeah. There are several days that are open. Yeah, come on. The other house is open. Come on. It's going to be spring. It's a gorgeous day out. So it's a little chilly. But if you... This is the best time to be hiking. Like, yeah. if you're into hiking, it's cool outside. Right. All it's the... sunny. All the, all the like, swaths of hikers haven't, you know, hit our there county There are no yet. bugs. It's not hot and yeah. humid. It's oh. actually kind of perfect. Right. So, so if you're if you want to come down, and we will give a scavenger discount. That's right. Okay, we we now have this new category. What did you cook this week? Hey, what are we gonna cook? So I will just continue to say that yeah. I have had success with the kimchi. Yes, and it tastes good. The back of our fridge is now filled with quart or I don't know what sizes are. I the, the, yeah, like the, quart. A mason jars of 
kimchi. They're pretty big jars. They're uh, labeled by date, and we've been eating it almost every meal. Almost every meal you know? has kimchi. Put it in a salad. Pasta. Put, it, put, put pasta. some rice, uh, whatever, meat. It just, it's such a great flavor. It's a I really love good it. flavor. Yeah. It's really good for you, too. Try something new. So I'm obsessed with fake noodles because we try. You did mention rice just now. I don't eat it. But you don't eat them. Yeah. But I love pasta, and eating a low-carb diet, uh, you can't eat pasta at all. Because pasta is all, all carbs. carbs. Right. So many carbs, so many calories. Um, so there are these fake noodles made out of this, like, fermented root vegetable from so Asia. It comes in, like, a plastic bag filled with a liquid. liquid. It yeah, looks like an IV bag. Yeah, it's like, really, you know? It's, like, cr the creepiest food. <laughs> the creepiest, like, future food. And so it's made out of some kind of a, a root in Asia, I right? I literally just said that. I know, and I'm saying it, too. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, yes! So, they're, if you look them up on, like, Amazon, they're called Miracle Noodles, but... I was going to order them on Amazon. I was like, oh, I've heard about these. I want to, like, make some little, like, fake mac and cheese or, like, meatballs and pasta or whatever. And I went to Walmart because that's basically the only store in our county. And they had them there. You know? Which is amazing. Like, in our little, like, our, our Walmart compared to any other It's like a small, chintzy Walmart. It's like, you know, the kind of kind of like a low class yeah like people visit our walmart from like the next county over and they're like what? so it's amazing they even have these so i bet you're the only one that bought them well, see, what's so funny is i bought like three packages of them and i tried them and i was like because i make ramen like i don't i haven't i've made ramen without noodles which kind of isn't ramen and so these are perfect for making like a thing of like broth with cabbage and noodles so i started with that and i was like uh-oh I love this. I want to eat it all the time. So I went back to Walmart and bought them out. I was like, yeah, I'm buying all these. So just so people understand, so if you take them, if you pull them out of the package and... You rent some. Yeah, and so they're just kind of like a, a mushy or what is it like? Yeah, they're a, kind of gelatinous. Right. But what you're supposed to do and what a lot of people like to do is you kind of dry fry them mm -hmm. in a pan um, so that they become sort of like al dente pasta so they're a little bit more firm and less like squishy and then you add sauce or you like you know stir fry them with whatever throw them in a soup i love i love right them. so basically <laughs> it's got the same texture as you're eating pasta right. it just takes on it's whatever flavor right. you have yeah exactly it's like a fake hamburger you know i love pasta i think pasta is delicious mm -hmm. i wish i could eat it all the time wow. and when i when i eat carbs i pretty much did eat all the time. I love it. Yep. But my weight was not <laughs> reflecting yep. back very well. Um, so what's cool is like, so anyway, you can buy them on, on Amazon. I'll link to them. Um, apparently, you can buy them at Walmart yep. as well. And you can buy them on Walmart.com. You can buy yeah. them on Walmart.com and have them delivered How, to your store. But the thing is, I mean, for us, it's a little expensive. But it's expensive. But it's a, a luxury which I encourage. It's like two something a package. Two twenty eight at right. Walmart for an eight ounce right. thing, which is, they say on the package is two servings, and I have like brought it out to two servings right. with like adding stuff. But um, Ryan, I think you're a worth it. So two twenty eight for one meal, yeah, in a day is a little pricey for us, cause <laughs> which is so funny. You're like, what? But um, you know, a lot of times when you buy bulk foods and you know it's much cheaper yeah. than two twenty eight a meal. It's yep. like fifty cents a meal, you know, or whatever. Right. Um, and we love to eat our meals and be like, all right, this costs us X amount of dollars. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like. Yeah. Literally eight carbs. If that's what you want to eat. Compared to like 80 or more, so. Yep. That's my story. All right, let's answer questions or listen to things that people called in about. The phone number is 540-407-8486, and you have three minutes to leave a message. Hey, scavengers. I just uh, listened to this week's podcast, and I just wanted to make a couple of points about uh, the whole offer up and debate and and i get it it's kind of a uh, it's kind of janky but it's it's really about diversifying your um your portfolio if you will um i keep pretty detailed uh tracking of my sales each month and uh i kind of wanted to go through um what i've sold and where this month i've sold about 90 items 42 of them were on facebook 
26 were on Craigslist, 13 were on eBay, 7 were on OfferUp, and one was on Nextdoor. Now, there's a couple of things that I would say make using things like OfferUp good. First off, if you're in a big city, uh, you just have more people that are willing just to come to you and get your item. I know you guys might be in the country, and I don't know if that would be a good time to use it. Um, the other thing is it's just easy to do. If I'm going to be listing something on Craigslist and Facebook, OfferUp makes it so easy. You just go in there, tap, tap your pictures, um, enter your description if you even need to do it. I can get a listing put out in like maybe 30 seconds after I've just done it on Craigslist. A lot of times I copy and paste the same verbiage into all three apps. And so just that little bit of extra time just puts me out to a bigger um, audience. So that's the other thing. Um, I think there was some talk of no rating system. There is a rating system in OfferUp. Um, there's a star system, and you can be one of their true blue members. If you upload your driver's license information, they they rank you as a seller, as a verified seller, basically, and people just have that much more um, confidence in buying from you when they see that icon. Another thing with shipping, they do shipping now with OfferUp. It's in a testing phase, and I had an offer recently of someone that uh, wanted to buy something and ship it, but I didn't trust the system yet. I'm not doing it. But, again, I just wanted to put that out there. It's all about diversifying, uh, it's, and it's just easy to throw the ad up. I, I don't really like offer up, but I do it. Like I said, seven sales. It got me seven more sales quicker than going through my other chains. So, hey, it was worth it. Keep it up, guys. Thanks, and I'll be talking to you later. Bye. Okay, so – I'm not going to say where you live, but according to your area code of your phone number, you live in quite a large um, metropolitan area, urban, suburban area um, in the United States. And that is super. We live two hours from I know. I mean, look, area. I think it's awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, wish that it worked. If he me. can sell that much on Facebook and Absolutely. Craigslist and offer up. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. We have, I just feel like we have done our best. We've listed stuff. Lots of stuff, different stuff. Different we, we're on all these different platforms and it's really, it's almost like crickets. And it's yeah. just because, I just think it's because we live so far away. Like, I can't tell you how many times we'll put up an item on Craigslist or OfferUp. Someone's like, yeah, I definitely, I want to buy it. Like, when can I come? And we'll give them our address and, and they're like, oh, that's Way too I far. didn't know that it was that far Which away. is crazy because it says it in my listing right. where I am. Or they say, are you ever in my area? Yeah, the people want to <laughs> constantly. And you know what? You know what's so funny? There's there's a, a city nearish, uh, you know, a university town even, which is like 35 minutes away from us. Yeah. And still people want us to drop it off. I'm like, so, oh, come on. So I feel like, I feel like he sounds like an urban scavenger and right. he's like doing it. The way, the way you should. should. And that's awesome. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, but I have a couple of of questions. What kind of stuff he sells? Right. You know, is it like what electronics? It? You know, I see those guys right. who are like... They sell those phones. Buying phones yep. and reselling phones, you yep. know. So that's a good... Uh, you know, I, 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 I just I wonder, like, I doubt he's selling stuff that uh, we sell, like right. clothes and weird antiques and weird vintage stuff. I feel like the, the stuff that sells on those other uh, platforms are the, like, you know... Well, electronics, furniture, right. appliances. Like, yeah, appliances. The other question I have is how much he's selling things for. Like, yeah. your mom did this thing yeah. where she was selling in a Facebook group. Right, when she was clearing stuff and out. And she'd be me. like, I just sold 100 items. And we'd be like, how much? How much and she's like, make? oh, I was selling stuff for $10 each. I'm like... Well, I can't make a living doing that. Yeah, so I just wonder about that. And then the other thing is, how much time do you spend communicating with people? You know, like where they're asking all these questions. And then how much time do you spend having to wait for people who, like, don't show up? Like, is that a problem? Right, that's interesting. Because we definitely deal with that. Where there are... Yeah. They're like, I want to come on Saturday, and we're like, fine, I'll be here at 12, and then they're, you know, we get a message on Saturday, oh, I can't come, can I come it, on Tuesday? And you're like, and you're oh. like Jesus, yeah. And then the last thing I wanted to uh, mention, it is cool that offer up is so easy to uh, post. Right. But like we said, I feel like that, or at least in our area, that just means it's so, there's so much more junk. Yeah. Like a mislabeled stuff 
horrible really pictures. Really bad photos. No descriptions. Right. No measurements. Because no... it's so easy. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, uh, but that's just the uh, reality, you know. Hi guys, uh, this is Jennifer from Brush Prairie, Washington. Just listened to your weekly blog post, and I had heard what you had said regarding your international shipping policies. How you only like to send things uh, priority mail international because you can track them. Um, I used to go this route as well because it seemed like I was always getting burnt, especially when an item was over eight ounces because that's when the price jumps from like $14 to $23. So what I ended up doing was anything over eight ounces, I will ship only to Canada, Europe, and Australia. And since I've changed this, I believe it's been a little over a year now, I have had no issues. It went from having issues to none. Um, so I will ship um, heavy items there. They seem to arrive quickly. Um, and I do get quite a few customers from those areas. Uh, I just hate to see you guys losing out on some sales just because you want to um, to track it. So, you know, it's, it's up to you. I mean, it's totally your call. If you kind of want to let your guard down a little bit, maybe just try it for a while. I don't think you would be disappointed. Um, but, yeah, keep up the great work, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye. No, <laughs> I'm done. Like, I've been, you know, selling on eBay for 10 years. I just got a neutral feedback from someone who had first-class shipping to them and was like, I never got it. There's no <clears throat> tracking. I'm just like, no, I can't. Okay. I can't. I'm going to give some credence to Jen Jennifer here. Yeah. So that thing we're talking about, we ship first-class to South Africa. That's true. So it's not one of the countries she talked about. Yeah. But it is true. It, it stinks. We're like, so we were willing to, to do first class, and then, of course, the tracking stops in America. Yep. He doesn't get it, or, you know, we have no proof that he got it, right. and then he leaves us a neutral feedback, and it's a pain in the butt. So she's saying this, and, we, and people have said this right. for a long time. We can turn on the countries we're willing to ship first class, and if right. you ship, yeah, Canada, Australia, right. England, because those because they have tracking. first class is tracking. Yeah, we tried that once a while ago, and for some reason it wasn't working. Where we just chose the countries we wanted to include. I, I don't know. I forget what happened, but it's just it's like I, I I get it. Like I totally yeah. I I would love to s send stuff places and like not have a problem, but. I feel like I was still having a problem with like people in England. Oh, you know what it was? This is what it was, especially in England. People would refuse stuff because they didn't want to pay customs. Right. right. We found that like, to be a problem oh. where it was cheap to ship. Yeah. Oh, to them okay. It's eleven bucks to ship because yeah. global a shipping charges all those custom fees and up import front. fees up front. When you do it first class, yeah, it seems real cheap. Great. And then when they get it, the post office expects them to pay this 20 import pounds fee. in fees. And they're like, oh, no, refuse. Right. And so, it comes back to me. They want their money back. And I'm just like, not yeah. not dealing so, with it. No. Jennifer. I, I hear what you're saying. You now have less competition because Ryan yeah, I, is I, unwilling I can't do it. to go outside. I don't want to shipping. do it. Yeah. Hi, this is Mark. Hi, Jay and Ryan. I love your guys' podcast. I got a question for you to see if anything like this has happened to you before. I was searching my own store for, and I just typed in ashtray, and seven items come up. But I have at least ten ashtrays listed that didn't come up. If I type in, like, mid-century modern ashtray, one shows up that didn't show up just on ashtray. And I have a couple others that didn't show up. And so I don't have any idea why they are not showing up. So I just wonder if you had any thoughts on that. Thanks. Cool. So this is a good question, and I'm not going to give you probably a good answer. But I'll tell you the things I've heard and seen. So number one is we're not really good about all this search stuff. Like some people, they're always like doing searches against their own store and figuring out the right word order to get the right searches. We're, right. we're not like that. We really are a listed and forget it. So yeah. I can't really tell you if that happens to us. I will say this week someone was uh, saying they were having a similar issue with something else in their search and someone came on and said eBay does not guarantee that your item will show up in the search that you think it will show up hmm. in, which is weird, you know? And that includes apparently you know, searching your own like store. Their algorithm will 
filter out certain things at certain times based on not only search terms but where you are and all this kind of stuff. So I'm not saying that that's what's happening right. to a you, but that's interesting to think of the eBay search as being kind of an organic, yeah, a living thing that isn't always spitting out the same search. Uh, it results every time. It's like a dynamic, right? So which. I don't know if that's true. But or not. what's odd is that he wasn't just searching like eBay in general. He was right. searching within his own store. Right. And you're like, you think if you put the word ashtray. Yeah. I don't know if the other ashtray was spelled ashtray with two different words and right. some were spelled with one single word. I mean, the only that other and the only other answer, and now I'm really getting off on kind of a fringe idea, yeah. is just, you know, eBay is an old website mm -hmm. that is constantly being recoded. You know, add the, brand new things are built on top of each other. And I just sometimes think that, you know, their eBay, a search as well, as eBay. well is just kind of clunky yeah whatever you know could be yeah i don't know the answer hi jamie ryan this is uh keith from boston just want to say uh keep up the great work uh i've been a ebay seller uh since 1999 the old days but i'm um, only serious the past couple uh past couple years i have two things um i have a question and a uh, a comment uh, my question is I can't find on the eBay website where uh, they used to have a section on keywords that they eliminate when you search. Uh, for instance, I'm trying to list a bunch of old 1950s um, boxing and wrestling magazines, and the title of the magazines is Boxing and Wrestling. And I've seen some sellers are listing them as boxing wrestling magazines, and they write more descriptions, the, the boxers or the wrestlers that are featured on the cover. Um, and some people will write the bo uh, boxing and the word and wrestling. Um, and I don't know if I can eliminate the and and put a better keyword in. Uh, I know there was something back in the day that they said and that eBay suggested not to write, like the word the. Um, but then also I know that if people put the, the search term in quotes, it's going to search just that term correctly and my titles could be eliminated. Uh, just a question. I don't know if you know the answer, but um, I've been trying to look for it on the eBay forum, and that's just really horrendous to look through. Uh, so that was my question. My comment is, uh, a couple podcasts ago, you spoke about uh, junk drawer lots, and you can't believe that people uh, do those and purchase them. Well, I just want to tell you that this past week, I sold my 51st junk drawer lot in two years. Um, like you, I go to auctions all the time. I'm a huge uh, proponent of uh, just the box lots. So I'll buy, just like you guys, I'll buy a bunch of box lots at auctions, um, and I always end up with uh, just like this uh, kind of just junk uh, that, you know, don't, has a little bit of value, but nothing worth to sell individually, or I don't have enough to sell on a lot. So I'm saying, like, you know, a keychain from, like, Disney from, like, 1995, a random bumper sticker, like a, a little wooden block, a, a Lego piece, uh, a broken earring, just stuff literally that in the past I would have just, got, in the box lots, I would have just thrown it in one box and just shipped it out to uh, Goodwill. Um, but what I started to do is I started to I, uh, get a whole large flat rate box, get it all ready, taped up and ready to go. And every time I go to these auctions and I get box lots that have all that random kind of junk that doesn't necessarily have a value, I fill up. I just keep on adding to that large flat rate uh, priority box. Um, and once that box is full, I dump the contents in my, uh, my little photo booth, take a pictures, and put them up for sale. You would not believe how much I get for these things. Fifty, sixty, seventy dollars uh, for it. I've ha not had knock on wood, not one return, and I just sold my fifty-first uh, junk drawer lot for at least thirty-five dollars plus shipping. I have another thing to uh, to add. I'm trying to uh, save for a uh, huge down payment on my house. I'm trying to pay, try to put down more than fifty percent down on a house. Um, but I have something to add. I um, I buy a lot of uh, lots of uh, magazines from auctions, anywhere, uh, magazines from anywhere from the 1940s on to 1970s, usually like 1980s is usually the, uh, the most current I will get, magazines. Um, usually buy them in huge lots, huge like Vogue magazines from like the 60s and 70s, and they can go for a pretty decent amount of money. Vogue, Cos Cosmo, um, Outdoor Life, Hunting, Fishing, pretty much any magazine 
Um, there's collectors for either there's a certain article or there's a cover that they want to uh, be trying to collect. But I'm gonna want I want to tell some um, all you guys out there is how important it is to put the date in the year of the magazine in the title. Um, oftentimes I will sell multiple uh, magazines to one buyer because it's someone's 50th wedding anniversary or someone it's someone's 60th birthday and they'll buy all the magazines from the month in the year that this person was born as a gift to them. Just had a great $180 sale today, sold them six magazines, uh, you know, obviously shipping it all together. It's great. So I just want to let you know, pass that word on. Make sure you guys are putting the, the month in the year and if there's a certain day um, in the auction title if you're selling a magazine or a back issue of a book or a manual or something like that. All right, thanks. Bye. Okay, so we have three things we're going to talk about here. Yes. He brought up good things. Number one, eBay search. Right. Do you, like, are there words that you don't have to include? Right. And of the... Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking yes, but I don't really know. Although I have heard two different things. Number one, I've heard that you should use a, a natural uh, language. So right. to uh, use yeah. all those words... Because that's what people would type. Right. I've also heard just to put keywords, like to be like a robot. Yeah. Where you're just putting keywords. It doesn't sound like human readable stuff. It's just, you know, right. magazine, a wrestler, George Foreman, you know, right. boxing. Right. You know, June 1851. Right. Uh, so I don't really know the answer. I And I think that it might be one of those things where eBay just doesn't really tell you exactly how to do it. So you can't. Get you don't beat know the for system, sure. so yeah. I guess you just have to kind of uh, experiment. There's probably there are probably also people smarter than we are about this stuff as well. So I tend to not put the words the and, um, especially. I mean, you said it was called like boxing and wrestling, um, and it's tough because like when I'm searching, I try not to use those words either. Yeah. You know what I mean? I will say. Definitely don't put anything in quotes. quotes yeah. I see a lot of people they put things in quotes, and when you do that, that means you're you're. What, I think you strip that out of yeah, the search it's because like stripping it out. that only comes if people only search put for their those. Quotes, yeah. yeah. Although I will say, if you put like the symbols for like eyeballs and put like look, <laughs> I feel like that's like the best thing that you can do. Just for everybody listening, that's a joke. Okay, number two, you talked about junk drawers. We yeah, said, like, who lots. buys that stuff? Because we do the same thing. You know, it's like all the stuff at the bottom of a box at an auction. Yeah. Uh, we often just try and pick out the coolest stuff. Yeah. And almost, like, we almost... We almost pick everything, yeah, usually. We, we can find a reason to sell everything. Yeah. But I do like that idea of just selling, every, you know, it all at one time. And if you're making 50 bucks, that's cool. That's My questions good. are two things. Are people always asking him to sell that one thing? Like, look, I just want that, that one, one magnet. Bracelet. Can you sell that to me for a dollar? I'm just, I'm wondering that. And number two, I wonder how he titles it. Like, mm. if it's, you know, magnets, pencils, blah, blah, blah. I mean, right. are you putting any of that stuff in the title? Or is it a literally just like junk drawer, cool stuff, right? estate finds? Yeah. I would love to know what look. it is. Look. <laughs> You're obsessed with look. <laughs> okay, so the third thing we're going to talk about is magazine you know, back issues. Yes, and actually I've been listening. We were talking about that. I have a bunch of like El Decor and we Architectural love Digest. We magazines, yeah. Um, stuff that we had for our rentals that got a little old, a couple years old. Or we just... I don't know, we had like dual, like two subscriptions to Architectural Digest. I'm like, this is way too many magazines. So, yeah, you want to put the name of the magazine, the date, and the month for sure. Um, so that people who are searching for Cosmo December 1982 yeah. find your listing. I've done that. It's before where I'm yeah. looking for an article yes. or a picture. Yes. And it's in a very specific magazine. Like someone mentioned it online somewhere. Like if you were trying to find like a British magazine, right, that had like it, a house in it. So there was a house on Airbnb in upstate New York. It's this amazing house that we're like, oh, that I love. And they I mentioned. I want to build that house. Right. I'm like, that is so great. So they mentioned, oh, we were we were in this British design magazine, you know, December 2013. Can't find a single one online. Probably because they mentioned it in Airbnb and people bought it online. 
So I have a search out for it on eBay. So when it pops up, I can buy if it. If someone actually puts in that title. In if the someone title. says, this right. design magazine, December 19, right. you know, 2013. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's very, very important to yeah. do that. That's a huge keyword for them. And I hope that you're able to get that uh, big down payment on, yeah. on the house. That's, That's awesome. That's a great goal. I love when people have like those kind of clear goals. That's... Because it's so satisfying, you know? Yep. Hey, so this is Mike up in Salem, Oregon. Quick question for you was, quite a while ago, you had some guy kept giving you an offer on a t-shirt. You guys talked a long time about it, and you kept denying him. And now I'm just curious, did you ever sell the t-shirt? I know that's very vague, I'm sorry, but I uh, thought it was a rock shirt. or it's not a kind of neat, but I was just curious if you ever did sell it. Maybe you could just say what you sold it for if you ever did. I uh, like the podcast. Rarely ever sell on eBay. Uh, just too busy with work. I uh, like to. I also used to do Amazon, so I used to give you a call and uh, harass you about your Amazon stuff. Uh, but that's about it. I'm a single dad with four kids, so always on the run. Love your podcast. Listen to it. I've actually caught up to you guys. I've listened to them all. So now I have to just wait for you to come up with another one. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Okay, he's asking us if that the call was a little muddied, but um, he was asking us about the guy who was basically harassing us about this one T-shirt that was sixteen dollars. No, I think was it was it like more than that? twenty-four dollars. Okay. Anyway, but it was pretty pretty cheap. It was just like a vintage shirt of like a PBS station in Virginia or TV something. station, <laughs> and he was like, you know, I want it for eighteen dollars, sh- free shipping, sh- ship for free, and. So we kept raising the price. Right. And he was really obnoxious about it. So, yeah, we kind of were fooling around with him. I mean, he sent them. us so many messages at, in one in one felled swoop. And then months later, he'd send us a message. Right. And then a month later, he'd send a message. And I think the reason why we were not willing to deal with him is because he was like, this shirt is old and yeah. gross and stained and, and has holes him. in it. And I will only give you this much. And so I'm like, of course I'm not going to sell it to yeah, him. Yeah, because... Because you're gonna return one, it. <laughs> he's rude, and that's just all the red flags of someone that's yeah. gonna return it. So what we w- were doing is we were raising the price every time he, he us messaged us. Like we, like we, uh, we wouldn't, wouldn't respond talk to, to him. him, and then he would send us a uh, message like, "What's going on? Why are you raising the price?" And then yeah, like six months later, he was like, "It still hasn't sold. I will only, you know, so." Sell- <laughs> And so, yeah, so the answer is it hasn't sold. It hasn't so sold. Maybe we're the uh, a fools It's for not selling the <laughs> item. But it's our right as a buyer to only sell to people who we feel good about, you know? Yeah. Hi, Jay and Ryan. This is Anna from Georgia. And first, I just want to say thank you so much for faithfully producing your podcast episodes and fostering such a great community. I am a lifelong scavenger but a fairly new eBayer. Um, I've sort of modeled my store after how you guys teach to do it, and really you've inspired me to do this so that I can help pay off my student loans faster and um, fund some creative projects that are really important to me. Um, So I took your advice. I started with 500 listings. Now I have over 1,200 items, kind of a little bit of everything. But my question is about some specific items. Um, So I recently had my biggest sale to date, It was a vintage Coogee sweater that I got for $2 at a little independent thrift store, and it sold for over $300. The next week, I found two gorgeous Hermes ties at another little thrift store. And what do these things have in common? I heard about them from you guys, and I never would have known what I was looking at unless I'd listened to your podcast. So I was just wondering if you have any other favorite little-known items that make your heart race when you find them. Um, it was kind of a game changer for me to find those because, like I said, I never would have known what I was looking at if it wasn't for you guys. So thanks so much. Thanks for everything, and keep up the great work. Okay, I just want to say, as a professional, it said, you're supposed to say Hermes. <laughs> no, actually, she said it correctly. Hermes. She said it correctly no, no, no. as if no, she no, were no, no, a no. French person. Hermes. Hermes. Hermes is the Herms. is the very American way of saying it. I love hearing those stories. It's just, I mean, it's it's just it's so unbelievable to me yeah. that it's just like unlimited. All this stuff is out there, and that I, Americans, because that's probably where she, you know, she, uh, 
she's American, that Americans are willing just to give up, just very give high this stuff items. away. It's yeah. just like this land of abundance and waste. Yep. And, yep. and like we've, and, and people all hearing us, we've like been able to hack that a system. It's right. like capitalism, a system that's eating itself by just like <laughs> producing so much stuff that it's just like that this people stuff. are just giving it away. It's crazy. Just give it away. So I love to find brands like that, obviously. Yep. Um, they are rare. Okay, so if she's talking about rare stuff, like things that would make my heart race, there is a perfume bottle that if you find, it's glass, French. Uh, La Ligue? Yep. Yeah. And if you can find that brand of bottle, right. you Empty can sell bottle. that thing for... Could be thousands. Over a thousand dollars. Thousands. Right. Yep. Um. Yes, that is something I look for. And say that name again. La Lique. Yeah. L a l i q u e. Yep. La Lique. I'm sure French people say it much yeah. cooler than La Lique. La Lique. La Lique. Anything made out of Shell Cordovan that makes my day. Yeah. I I I can't remember last time I found Shell Cordovan. Probably because we talked about it and now everyone's like getting them. But basically, they're sure. mainly on wingtips right. often. And they look like regular wingtips, but the uh, leather is so smooth. There are no, uh, no creases. ridges or creases because it's made out of the butt of a horse. It's like a very fine leather. And there are ridges, but there are no creases. You know, you can sell them for a minimum of like $150, $200. But if it has a brand on it, right. people will also pay $500 or more for it. One of our highest priced items was a pair of Shell Cordovan boots by a fancy contemporary designer. We sold them for almost $1,000. Yeah. That was one of those like moments where you're like, oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> but, you know, so it's cool. Like, uh, I feel like it's kind of dangerous for people just starting out to, to find these really cool things yeah. and sell them high price. And then, and then you don't find them for It's like again. the expectation <laughs> of like, oh, I'm just going to keep finding this stuff. Really it's get hard. used to the bread and butter, baby. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, uh, you know, yeah. It, it, it's hard to list things off because the, the things we've found that have sold for very high amounts of money are so rare. And if you found these things, I mean, it's cool that you heard about it on a podcast, but I'm assuming yeah. you found them too because it drew your eye so obviously if you have, have a good yeah. eye, so you keep trusting your eye. If something yeah. looks cool, cool pattern, cool right. as material, something about it is neat. If it's, you know, th these things normally aren't very expensive. Just get it. Just it's grab a low it, risk. A research, you'll be surprised. I find if I ever am holding something saying, should I buy this or shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't it? It's Always like, buy just it. buy it. Every it's so it's cheap. regret I've ever had as a scavenger is I when I buy passed something. on something. The, and it's cheap. it's yeah. so cheap. You're when I like, didn't go it. all in. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's it. That's it for the podcast this week. You can check out our blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discuss and to join the conversation on the forum. You can leave a question or a comment on our voicemail line. Again, that phone number is 540-407-8486. We post an episode every Monday morning. On Wednesday evening, we post a What Sells video um, that shows what sold, how much it sold for, currently being very generously brought to you by Stephen Schultz. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube, so you always get the latest episode. You can rent our vacation farmhouse this month and beyond. There are openings, so you should check it out. That's Link to on our sidebar on scavengerlife.com. And we are ending this podcast in, in three, three, two, two one. one. Bye.